Hello, AP Seminar students. This is part two of our three-part journey on how to write an EOCA. Um, so we are going to learn today to, like we, like we talked about yesterday, to identify the main idea and explain the line of reasoning. I'm going to show you some examples of what that actually looks like. Don't forget, in the EOCA, we want to do three things. That's identify the main idea, explain the writer's line of reasoning, and to evaluate the evidence. We'll get to the evidence in part three of our journey together, but today we are focused solely on identifying the main idea and the writer's line of reasoning. This is how the wording actually appears in the college board uh, when they give you the question. So this wording will always stay the same. The reading will change. Identify the author's argument, main idea, or thesis. We can just take that as main idea. And number two, explain the author's line of reasoning by identifying the claims used to build the argument and the connections between those claims. So as we talked about yesterday, you have to identify the claims and explain those connections. Remember uh, what a main idea is. Again, it is the writer's thesis. It will be supported by multiple claims. So here's some examples that I've written for you of what you would actually write for question number one. Notice it is not long. It'll probably be just a sentence for question number one. So let's take a look based upon the wildfire article that we looked at. So which is best? The devastation in California would be far less widespread if the state had learned its lessons. That's actually copied as the first sentence from the, uh, from the article. Number two, March, who's the author of the article, March's main idea is that California's state leaders could lessen the devastation of the wildfires if they enacted up-to-date regulations and helpful policies. Or number three, the fires themselves cannot be stopped. They are fueled by climate change layered on top of an ecosystem that burns regularly as part of its natural cycle. So which one is the best one here? If you read the article, you would know that number two is the best. First, it is expressing the actual main idea of the article, and it is encompassing all the major sections of the article. It does not blame the wildfires on global warming, even though March does acknowledge the, the role that climate change plays. Importantly, it encapsulate March's main idea that the state leaders could lessen the devastation of the wildfires if they could do two things. These are the two major sections of the article. They could enact up-to-date regulations and have helpful policies. So that's all you do for step one is just a one sentence, maybe two sentence summary of the main idea, including the claims that the author has. Don't get into the specific evidence. You don't have the time. For the second question, you must identify the line of reasoning. Remember that is the logical sequencing of claims that develop a writer's main idea. It is like a map and you're stopping at different locations along the map to be able to prove that uh, your main idea is correct. So the line of reasoning, I understand is an awkward thing to write. Consider using phrases in the line of reasoning like first the author claims or the author begins arguing. Maybe you'll say the author builds on this claim. This is all how you can make connections. The author acknowledges this. In contrast, the author says this. This is going to help you show connections between those different parts of the map. Feel free to call claims claims. And don't be afraid to just say this connects to the main idea. You can be very explicit. This is more of a reading task than it is a writing task. So guys, in question number two on the line of reasoning, these are things you can actually use, claims and sentences that you can use. Okay, so option one of, of what this would look like. So here's one student doing this. March makes the claim that wildfires are caused by climate change and cannot be stopped. She says California should use up-to-date regulations to make more buildings fire safe. She says that California should have policies that make it expensive for people to build in areas that fires can start. Now, this does a very good job identifying the claims and does a really horrible job in explaining the connections. 
Nothing here is explained. In fact, there's no evidence given that uh, these claims are developed by the author um, and no way in which you can show the relationship between them and how the author went from claim to claim or why they went from claim to claim. So this is not what you want to do if you're producing something like this for question two, you're wrong. Take a look now at an uh, example of question two done correctly that would score full points. Notice there are three paragraphs. The paragraphs are probably going to align. They're not huge, but they're probably going to align with the article itself and the claims. So a little paragraph per claim. Notice here how it starts. March begins her argument. So we're acknowledging the argument here. We're showing where it is in relation to the other claims. We're going to deal with the first one she makes. March begins her argument by acknowledging. I'm showing that March is pushing this off to the side a little bit, acknowledges that it's it's out there by acknowledging the rule, the role climate change is playing in making wildfires worse. She highlights the scope of the problem by sharing that 2.5 million acres have burned in California this year alone and establishes how hotter temperatures and drier landscapes due to climate change are in part to blame. So here I'm able to describe a little bit of the um, claim that she is making. Notice that I'm taking tiny little pieces of evidence from her and using that to show how she is going about and talking about that claim. Remember, I think it's a good time for us to go back to explain the author's line of reasoning by identifying the claims used to build the argument and the connections between them. So this is my part of, of, the, of explaining the author's line of reasoning. Okay, I'm explaining this claim. Now I'm gonna go back and explain the connection after acknowledging this reality. So I've put the connection here she then shifts to her main argument. I'm helping my reader know where we where uh, March went. She then shifts to her main argument. I'm showing the connection here because I'm saying this, this was not her main focus. Now she's going to shift to her main focus. What's her main focus? California leaders could be doing more. Her first claim to develop this, that I acknowledge this is her first real proof, lists the many ways California fire regulations are out of date. The fire safe building codes, quote, apply only to new structures and do not retrofit older buildings. She adds to this claim. That's another phrase that I am using that is showing the connection here. So I stated a claim. I grabbed a little bit of a quote from her just to quickly explain that claim. Didn't take me long. And now I'm going to use a connection phrase here. She adds to this claim when she shares that codes haven't been updated since 2008, allowing dangerous practices like mulching and almost perfect fuel to be laid at the most important part of buildings. Now, here's another relationship thing. She finishes this section. So this is, I'm calling this a section. I'm saying her line of reasoning was all about out-of-date regulations. I've walked the reader through the building codes. I've gone to the bad science that the codes haven't been updated. And then she finishes this section with her strongest support. Here I am again showing a connection that this was building, it was crescendoing to her strongest support for this claim when she shows how fire risk maps are out of date and thus the building codes that could prevent fires aren't applied to areas that are actually in danger. Here I feel that I do a good job because I give what I think is her best piece of evidence for this claim. This resulted in the burning of Santa Rosa, not just in 2017, but again in 2019. So I show how March crescendos up and really proves to the reader that the out of date uh, regulations are causing a lot of harm, uh, You know, mostly because Santa Rosa burns not once, but twice. Now, March concludes her attack. So I'm showing that we are getting to the end of our day here. We have progressed over on our journey. She concludes her attack on the state leaders by showing that they are doing nothing to discourage buyers or businesses from building in these unsafe areas. That was enough bees that it was like Bears Beats and Battlestar Galactica, huh? Um, so we, we were going to get through all of these things. She concludes her attack. And then I'm explicitly going to say Beats which is out there, like this connects to her main idea because it shows that not only are the fire regulations failing, but the policies are just allowing more people to be in harm's way. And thus the problem is going to get worse. 
So I think this is why she ends her line of reasoning here, because not only are the policies not working, but they're actually allowing people to continue to build and fire unsafe areas, and it's going to get worse. And this is an effective way for her argument to end. This is an example, three little paragraphs, tiny quoted evidence, connection phrases that allow you to walk the reader through the line of reasoning used by the author. You should mimic exactly what you do uh, for the doom scrolling article right off of this example using these phrases to help you show those connections. Hope this was helpful for you. Take care, APSM.